I hope you've enjoyed this study of the simplest way to change the world. I hope it will impact our homes and our life groups greatly. At a time like this, I think it's really important for us to ask a really basic question. Why did Jesus come? Now, you know, there are many answers to that question. He came to, to do the Father's will. He came to teach. But Luke summarizes it all with one very potent statement. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So it's important for us to remember that Jesus came on a mission. He came on a redemption mission. So that leads us to the question, why are we here? And the answer has to be the same, doesn't it? If Jesus came to save the lost, then we're supposed to love what Jesus loved. We're supposed to promote what Jesus promoted. He's left us here to be on a mission as well. It's interesting that several times the scripture tells us that Jesus said, I am the light of the world, or it was said about the Lord Jesus that he was light. John says that in him was light and there was no darkness at all. But do you remember that time that Jesus then looked at his disciples and he said, you are the light of the world? Of course, our light is reflected light. It doesn't source in us. We're sort of like the moon reflecting the light of the sun. But as Jesus was the ultimate light, we are to reflect his light and be little lights in the world. So it's really important that we learn to use our lives and hopefully our homes as platforms to take light to a very lost world. Um, for some reason, we're really comfortable at isolating our homes from the world. I, I am. It's great that our homes can be sort of a, a, a place away from the rush of the world. And it's a different thought to invite the world in to our homes. But I believe that that's what this study and really what the scripture is asking us to do to use our homes as a platform to build relationships, to be witnesses. Uh, C.T. Studd was a great missionary. He was an Englishman who was a cricket player. Those who watched him play said that he was so talented he could have been one of the greatest cricket players that Great Britain, Britain ever produced. So he could have been very wealthy and very famous. But he felt God calling him into missions. So he left the fame and the wealth and he spent time in China and India, and for many years, he lived in Africa. And one time C.T. Studd, I'll paraphrase now, said, when I go back to England, he said, I find my fellow believers in little comfortable groups choosing to live, he said, within the sound of the church bells. And he pictured Christians living in these little Christian ghettos, under the sound of the, of the church bells in the steeple, places that were, were very safe and very quiet, gathering with other Christians. But C.T. Studd went on to say, I must choose to live my life where I hear the chant of pagans bowing before idols, and I hear the cries and the clamor of the lost. I hear the, the chains of eternal lostness, and I hear the screams of their pain, and I choose to live there because that's where I know that Jesus is saving souls. Uh, Stud died in 1931 in the Congo. Maybe we could choose, instead of making our homes little refuges away from the world, but we could make them places where we invite pagans in. And that's uncomfortable. They may say awkward things. They may say crude things. They may, uh, they may not use the language we would use. They may vote for different people than we would vote for. They may have different opinions than we would have. So that can all uh, amount to awkward situations. But isn't that where Jesus is saving souls? Where unsaved people are at the edge of lostness? These chapters remind us to use our homes to invite unsaved people in. And not only that, but to invite others in that we can minister to. It, it, uh, chap, the chapter 11 talks about inviting in uh, singles if we're a family. They would like to partake in our family life perhaps at times. Uh, we could invite in students uh, who are away from home studying. Uh, perhaps we could invite in single moms. Uh, we could use our homes as foster homes 
temporarily for, uh, for infants or for small children or for teenagers. Uh, perhaps we could use our homes uh, to invite in immigrants who've come to this country and they find it to be a very cold and bewildering place. We, we can use our homes as a platform where we build relationships and then our love and concern for them translates into our being able to give them the gospel. We've sort of gone full circle, haven't we? Uh, at the beginning of our study several weeks ago, we talked about the fact that when God created man, he made a home for mankind in Eden. And, and one day we're going to come full circle to where the Bible tells us he is going to invite us back to his home and finally make it our home. And the Bible speaks of that place called the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's a triumphant, a thrilling passage really. Let, let me read about it in Revelation 19 starting in verse 6. The Bible says this, Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It is granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. What a thrill it is going to be someday to be invited into the home Christ has prepared for us. You can only imagine the sounds, the splendor, the grandeur when we stand before our Savior, when we're able to honor Him and sing to Him, and He presents to us what is our new home. Let us in the meantime use our homes as a tool to inviting lost folks and believers that need ministering to into our homes because coming home spiritually is really what it's all about.